You already know the three ways that we transport carbon dioxide in the blood. Again, this graphic is showing CO2 starting in the tissues and it's going to be um, loaded into the bloodstream to be carried away to the lungs to be breathed out. Um, the one thing we haven't done yet is that more complicated equation that results in bicarbonate formation. So I'm going to draw it up here and then we'll see where it is in the in the blood. So the, the chemical reaction is going to be a little more complicated than our hemoglobin ones. CO2 is going to combine with water, H2O, reversible reaction to form bicarbonate plus a hydrogen ion. This reaction is carried out by carbonic and hydrase. And this hydrogen is going to lower pH because that's what pH is. It's increased hydrogen. So increased H plus is going to result in low pH. Let's look at um, where that happens in, in the blood here. So this looks more complicated. Same thing though. Carbon dioxide is unloading from the tissues, combining with water via carbonic anhydrase. This enzyme is going to be converted to bicarbonate is this one. Same as this bicarbonate. I want to actually not make sure not to cover up the negative there. There it is. And a hydrogen ion. That is how the bicarbonate is formed, which is about how about 70% of CO2 is carried. Not actually CO2 anymore, right? It's it's converted into bicarbonate. Um, at the tissue, at the lungs, that's going to be reversed. This Hydrogen ion is actually buffered by hemoglobin. So there's a HB hemoglobin binds to it. That is gonna shift hemoglobin affinity and shift it to the right. So that is is that Bohr effect. Um, this is actually a buffer system for, for acids. Um, hemoglobin buffer system. Okay, what happens then in the pulmonary capillaries, the opposite, right? So this is this direction happening here. We're gonna go the opposite direction. I'm gonna show you a figure, it's gonna be a little complicated. I'll tell you which of this stuff um, you should know. So here is our tissue cell. This is what we just did. Let's first review that. They'll dissolved in plasma. That is our um, about, oh, this color isn't showing up. Seven to ten percent is this. Then we've got carbonic anhydrase. I don't need you to know the difference between the slow and fast. There's two different locations for that enzyme. That's what is happening here. These are the same. In either way, carbonic anhydrase is producing bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. This is in this form, about 70% of carbon dioxide carried. Then number three, we've got carbon dioxide binding to hemoglobin. Carboaminohemoglobin is formed. There it is. And this, uh, make sure that's right, is the 20%. This is all happening primarily in this direction, in the tissues of the body. For We're looking at carbon dioxide. Oxygen is unloading from hemoglobin at the tissues. This is this right here is facilitated by the presence of this low pH and high 
PCO2. This carbon dioxide being added on here is facilitating this, and that's the Bohr effect. Then in the alveolus, alveoli, the opposite's happening. We've got oxygen loading, and that's facilitated by no longer having a Bohr effect. And then for carbon dioxide, we've got carbonic anhydrase carries out the reversed reaction, right? So this way, and that is facilitated by this being high, right? And PCO2 being low, so it facilitates the chemical reaction in that direction. And I'm sorry, I squared that in the wrong spot though. That should be these two is the carbonic anhydrase. And then lastly, dissolved in plasma. This is just diffusion, straight up carbon dioxide diffusion. All of this is facilitated by high PCO2 um, in the blood here. So this is going to happen in this direction. Opposite for oxygen, those directions. Learning check six. What happens when you exercise to pH as you increase PCO2? 